Hello and welcome back. This is another short update of the CNC project. Um, and it's going to be a rather short one because although I've done a lot of things, I have extremely little to show for it. Um, but I do have some things to announce and um, that's where we'll start. First of all, I've been doing a lot of work trying to get these things here to work um, so I'm able to output uh, PCB designs that uh, come from PDF files or postscript files and uh, engrave them to photo positive uh, PCB and um, that turned out to be quite a lot of work and it turned out not to work at all um, and the reason is pretty simple. If you take a look at um, the first tux that I did, and I'm going to use the um, lens here, you can actually see that the edges are actually more engraved than the rest of the picture, and the rest of the picture um, has a certain pattern where there's a change from black to white. Um, as I was trying to go for more complicated things, I noticed that this was turning out to be a problem. Because, if you look at some of the things that I did, this here is a, this here is a good one, um, but this one, this one isn't so bad either. But the first prints looked like this, and as you can see the edges are not very well defined and there's a there's a pretty visible comb pattern um, between the lines uh, which come from the um, from the effect when the laser is turned on and turned off again and when there's uh, acceleration and braking between uh, between the lines and um, I had a lot of different patterns emerging uh, whatever I tried and in the end, I went for the approach to actually once again write my own software. And uh, that's one of the first things that I'm announcing. Uh, I added something to my GitHub repo, which is called uh, G-Code for Bitmaps. And it's a very little Python script, um, which is actually meant to convert bitmaps uh, to G-Code and uh, to make it able, able to engrave it. Um, the only thing that it does is actually it lowers the z-axis for everything that is supposed to be black and it uh, raises it when it's supposed to be left white. Um, it's pretty simple and it's easy to use but it has a lot of features so um, it might not be the easiest thing to get to know. Um, I added that, and uh, for those of you using it um, with uh, Linux, you can even import uh, PDFs and PostScript files uh, directly. It might still have some bugs, I'm pretty sure it does, but it seems to be good enough uh, to start with. And the second thing that I wanted to announce, um, I actually went ahead and I put all the um, the STL files for this version of the printer with all these files, uh, with all these parts, sorry, um, on my GitHub. And uh, all of them can be found, let's go here, uh, all of them can be found in the extras directory. So if you go to uh, Dirk Harendorfer, uh, UCNC controller extras. Um, you can now actually find the directory Rod Robin, um, which is uh, which is the CNC, and uh, second new directory is the G code for bitmaps utility, and um, this should get you um, started building your own uh, CNC. There's not a lot of documentation with that yet and I will be adding it over time, but I'm pretty busy right now um, during the day, so 
I can't promise anything to happen really quickly, but um, I will make another video um, showing exactly how to build uh, the CNC, uh, where to start, which steps to take. Uh, for a start, you can use um, all of the documentation in these videos because um, I went over it quite thoroughly, I think. And it should get you going. Um, most of the parts that are required um, are documented in a bill of materials, uh, which are the steppers, the stepper pulleys. I'm using T2.5. You can use T2. Um, those are usually a bit less expensive. Um, all of the threaded rods are M5. All of the nuts are M5. Um, the uh, the plain rods are uh, five millimeter. Um, you should go for something very hard. Um, a hard material is better than than a soft one. And um, the rest is uh, pretty simple. Uh, to be able to print it, you need to have a 3D printer which has a, at least one axis going over 130 millimeters. Um, that is the longest part. Um, which should actually um, be most 3D printers that are commonly available. Um, material that I used uh, was uh, PLA, um, which seems to work very nice. And uh, the more unusual parts that I was using uh, are uh, the bearings used for Model RC cars, which have an inner diameter of five millimeters, outer diameter of eleven millimeters, and uh, and have a height of uh, four millimeters too. But I guess uh, looking at the parts that I uploaded, you should have a pretty good idea um, what you're going to need. And uh, maybe somebody wants to get started. The build of the of the table is still very simple. I didn't refine the parts. Um, I'm pretty happy with the way this works. The only thing that I'm personally not happy with is the way that the that the uh, y-axis belt is fixed here, and that will have to be improved. But uh, for a start, it's, everything is really really easy to build, and. Uh, I guess it's not that much of a problem. Uh, you're going to need a lot of M5 nuts um, because they're basically what gives this uh, this printer all of its stability. And thinking about sizes, um, my printer is about uh, I don't know maybe 35 centimeters um, in the in the x-axis and about 30 in the y uh, you might want to go for something bigger it should definitely support it well basically that's it for today um, I'm still keeping going um, I want to get to the point where I can actually do some uh, uh, production of uh, PCB boards and um, I definitely want to have uh, some form of engraver on here um, with a with a small motor. I already have um, this here ready. This here is an, an RC car motor which is pretty strong and a small engraver tip and um, I'll see if we can get this to work someday. Uh, but for now, um, this is it. Uh, thanks for watching, and bye-bye.